Hey folks, welcome back. This is episode 5 of my Alpha 47 Clockwork Empires playthrough. As I say this, as I record this, there's actually been an experimental update. That is a release to the experimental branch of Clockwork Empires because it's in early access. So between stable releases, uh, Alpha 46, 47, 48, there are experimental releases. In this case, Alpha 47A, uh, and then there will be a B and possibly a C, and all of that gets rolled into the next stable release. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because that means I'll be cutting this playthrough short. I mean, I'm still going to continue play through this episode. I'll probably jump around a bit and make some cuts. But I really want to check out Alpha 47A, because a bunch of new functionality was added to the laboratory. Um, so looking at the patch notes, it seems that... Um, Basically, there's now uh, a system in place, sort of backend or infrastructure in place for upgrades, which you research at a laboratory. And for now, it seems the upgrades are limited to, uh, I believe, farming upgrades, uh, agricultural labor upgrade technologies. Uh, this is still the first iteration of the upgrade tree. Uh, that again, that will be Alpha 47A, which is live on the experimental branch. I'm still playing here on the stable branch. In addition, you can uh, certain crops are now locked behind uh, research prerequisites. So those include the opium plants, opium poppies, bamboo, and the coconut palm. Also, uh, there are apparently new um, the ability to plant plants. So patch notes say grass, shrubbery, and flower planting uh, for gardening enthusiasts. Apparently. Oh, I have some workers. Good. So, because I want to check those out, and because upgrading your client to an experimental client means uh, often means that saves will s stop working, uh, and so I'm, I'll be cutting this one off here. I mean, this is episode five. This is probably this is as long as most of the other uh, series have gone already. Uh, yeah, but uh, so that's that, um, and then I will probably give everyone a preliminary uh, report on my thoughts on Alpha 47A. So that's where we're going for here. And for now, just continue on for, with life in the colony. And continue our policy of friendship with the fish people. And we return to the colony. Bandit raid in progress. Now, the notification said there were a half dozen bandits attacking, which I take to mean exactly six. Hopefully that's not a problem because I think, although I have a military squad of four, um, some of them were actually kind of far away. What is going on? Oh no. It's a combined fishman bandit attack. And I uh, lost Muriel Brazenton and I killed at least one ban Okay. Too much stuff's going on. Lost Muriel Brazenton. Lost bandits will be buried. I don't want beetles to spring out of their decomposing corpses. A work party's been abandoned. And same hostile fish person. Oh, is that fish person that's hacking the bandit for me? Well, that's convenient. Did I lose my military crew? No. I lost the overseer of some other some other crew. Oh, it's a little bit of excitement in the colonies. I think we've successfully repelled the invaders. Although Bran Griff and Roman Xander are two brave militiamen. Oh, Bran Griff is badly, badly wounded. That's okay. Oh, man. Huh. I really do... Caesar Onion. So I'm going to mark his corpse for proper burial, and I'm going to claim his rifle. Uh, yeah, so, as we can see, um, we've jumped ahead of, uh, in time a little bit. I've started construction on a number of new things. Oh, and I had the foresight to build a graveyard. This is the metalworks in progress. This is the trade depot in progress. This is the foreign office, mostly complete, although I don't have an overseer signed here. This is actually the barracks. As uh, 
observant uh, viewer pointed out last time, I had not built a barracks. A barracks is necessary so that I am able to recruit and train new people to the military. And if I ever want more than one military crew, then I'll have to build a second barracks. So the barracks is the only way for you to recruit and train up uh, new soldiers. And after much searching, you can see I did a lot of searching. It took me a long, long time. I eventually did locate a hematite mine. Ooh, my naturalist found a gold deposit way over here. Yeah, that's kind of an issue with this map. Um, in general, the temperate biome map, or the sorry, the temperate, I think, I believe that the internal name for this map is temperate Colorado, but basically the temperate biome, this one, the grasslands, um, resources tend to be very widely dispersed. So like this native gold mine, it's nice, but I'll probably never build an actual mine there because it's so freaking far away. And the nearest hematite mine, hematite node I was able to locate was here. This is literally the only place, the only source of hematite I could find in the entire map. So I'm building a map here. It's not convenient. Um, yeah, but it's, it's the best I've got. Which reminds me, I need to queue up a mine shaft for the hematite mine. But that little bit of excitement aside, um, with the bandits and the fish people, I think we're still doing pretty well. I think the bandits came to steal my food, but we shot them down. And now, because I lost an overseer, I need to see. Look okay, at the carpentry is still working under Hydunia. Kitchen appears to be fine. Ceramics workshop, no problem. Naturalist office, okay. This is actually the completed bunkhouse. Um, yep, military barracks is fine. I don't have anyone assigned to the foreign office, and I really should get on that. Let's see. Parmelia Flood. You're not doing anything else. You can be my new uh, foreign relations expert. So, as I pointed out um, in previous episodes, the functionality of the Foreign Office has been improved, and now, instead of just uh, working toward your relations with the, the Empire or the local bandits, you can also similarly influence your relationship with the three foreign national powers. So, the Republic Mechanique, the Novo Rus, and the Stalmark. And you can see their standing bars are segmented into three sections, right? There's neutral relations, hostile, and friendly relations. Whereas Clockwork Empire, the Empire will never actually attack you no matter how badly your standing with them gets. Local bandits, they're just friendly or hostile. They're never really neutral. But the three national powers, so we're ho technically we're hostile with the Republic and then neutral and uh, friendly with the other two respectively. You could probably have friendly relations with all three. Uh, for now, I want to avoid too many more bandit, uh, bandit attacks, so yes. So, um, another new thing uh, with the foreign offices is now when you change the subject of your uh, diplomatic relations, your relationships with the other powers will reset back to zero. So the, any standing that I had accumulated with the Empire, which I did not spend on favors, and by the way, I've just received two immigrants, any f unspent favor resets back to zero. So now I've switched my emphasis to the bandits, uh, so this influence zeroed back out. And I'm going to start accumulating influence here, and maybe I can get them to give me loot. I'm going to need a bunch of standing desks since I've queued some up but have not actually constructed any. Here we go. Now you may wonder, if I have no hematite, how is it that I'm building all these buildings, and specifically the mine shaft, which requires at least one iron ingot? Well, as you'll recall, I did find the remains of a wrecked airship debris over here, which contained, among other things, gold, but also a good number of iron ingots and bolts of cloth. So I've been taking from those as I need them. Uh, but my colonists are a little bit lazy and haven't really been up on picking those up and delivering those into town. That's fine. They'll... 
they'll get on it when they get on it. And in the meantime, uh, someone's found sulfur. In the meantime, all these projects will proceed apace. Now the, the issue here is because I've got like six projects going simultaneously, they're all going to go very, like my workforce is spread amongst all of them. So they will all develop um, one sixth as quickly as if I was building them one at a time. Uh, so this might take a little time. This is probably the least efficient way to do it. But I think we're okay in terms of food and security so we can afford to take our time. Uh, let me... I know there are a number of fishman corpses and bandit corpses like out here where all the fighting was. Let's see. Bury the corpses. Except for the fishman corpses. And for those I'm going to say... I should have... Oh, there we go. Here's the option to dissect fish people. Which there's only one. Hmm, I thought there were more corpses. I'd like to make sure that the rest of them are buried. And... Because the sight of blood upsets my colonists, I'd also like to order some cleanup on the colonists. So I'm going to say clear the terrain here, which also flags all the like the scrub and the little stumps and things. And that should that should keep my colonists all very busy for a good long while. And you notice my naturalist has the study horror job down here. So when Beatrice Golden Thomp gets back into town, she'll probably study the fish person. So we've skipped ahead in forward in time a little bit, and Beatrice Goldenthomp has taken the opportunity to dissect the fish person, and the result of that uh, research is displayed in the window on the left. And we can see here that her result uh, yielded up some interesting uh, discoveries, and because they're prestigious, they've actually increased my relations with all factions. So if we go here, uh, I guess presumably not the bandits who don't care about that stuff, but my relations with the Stalmark, the Novorus, and the Republic are all, they're all standing 10, which now that I think about it is a bug. So uh, this is a good opportunity to discuss the influence bug. What should have happened was that with the successful study of the fish person, my standing with the three national, four national powers should have increased by 10. However, there's a uh, there's an acknowledged bug. The devs have mentioned that this bug is fixed for Alpha 47A, actually. So as soon as I get onto the experimental branch, it will work as intended. Uh, but basically, when there were changes in standing, the standing was changed to that amount rather than increasing by that amount. So instead of incrementing by 10, they were all set to 10, which is clearly a bug because I was friendly with the Stalmark, uh, neutral with the Novorus, and hostile to the Republic previously. And getting between each of these tiers requires like, I don't know, like a hundred, a hundred standing points or more. Uh, yeah. So that was a good opportunity to show you the way <laughs> different systems interact. I built a naturalist office, which gave me a naturalist with whom I was able to dissect and research a fish person. And one of the results of which was an increase in standing with the national powers, which ties into the way the foreign office works, which also gave me an opportunity to shed light on a bug, which has since been fixed. So everything I just said in the last 30 seconds is now out of date. Oh, merchants, merchants have arrived. They're okay, the arrived is uh, a little bit early to say. Merchants are on their way to my town. And bandits are approaching my car? Well, I don't need to worry about them. Now, the interesting thing about merchants is that um, they're defenseless. Like, they don't carry guns. So, like any colonists, if they encounter hostiles, they will attempt to pummel them to death. Oh. Someone's objecting to my friendliness with the fish people. Peregrine Tellington. Hillingston, uh, you shut your mouth. Now it looks like these merchants are coming in with a variety of goods. Had I not found that hematite mine, I, oh, this is, haha, <laughs> we'll just tiptoe past these guys. Yes. Had I not discovered the 
hematite mine, I would be very interested in purchasing the stack of iron plates and uh, this stack of iron pipes. But because I have a, because I do have a hematite mine up and running, I think maybe the smelting crucible I can actually build that myself. Maybe these copper ingots. Maybe the, the other ingots might be worth trading for in this case. Oh, by the way, the mine is complete, although there is no module, so I'm not going to assign an owner there. Peregrine Talington, what did I just say? So, um, the merchants are on their way in. Now, I don't have a lot of stuff to trade. In fact, I appear not to have anything to trade, because I didn't designate any items as trade goods. Well, among other things, I certainly want to trade this gold. I wonder if I can trade this even though it's not here. I wish I'd had opportunity to smelt it into gold ingots, because that stuff is super valuable. It's like um, gold ingots are have a trade value of 600 something, whereas gold nuggets only have a trade value of 150s. So had the metalworks been completed in time, I could have used the smelter. The smelter. Um, here we are, the smelting crucible to turn them into ingots. Ah, that's the direction they were coming from. What do, what else do I have that they might want? I think I've got an extra wall shrine I'm not using. Maybe uh, maybe our good friends will be interested in these cultural knickknacks. And what is this? It's a box workbench? Yeah, why not? Maybe you'll want this as well. Maybe I can interest you in... I can't see that they'll want any of the rest of this. Or it's such a low value that I may as well just keep it for myself. I don't suppose I can designate an Aurox skull as a trade good. Nope. Well, I don't have a lot to trade this time around. But the merchants are here. They've arrived with their goods. Let's see. If I trade to you these four golds and this workbench and this wall shrine, I have 990 trade value worth of stuff. Um, ooh, beer. I haven't made any beer. These are 50 each. Zinc, malachite. I have many sources of malachite nearby, so I'd say I want all your beer. Actually, ooh, these are very expensive. Pipes and plates. Okay, so maybe that's... You know what? Maybe they'll trade me a little something on top. Maybe one of these zinc ingots. That it greatly exceeds my trade value. What happens if I try to propose a wildly unequal trade? I say, old thing, this is simply an appalling trade proposal. I assume that means they've rejected it. So, all right. For this trade, pleasure doing business with you. So they've taken possession of the gold ingots, which is great. Uh, the gold nuggets, which is great, because they'll go grab them themselves, and I don't have to lug them back into town. And I got some stuff. So the stuff they traded to me, they'll leave here on the ground. Um, and otherwise... Oh, I didn't realize it was a stack of nine iron plates. Oh, that was a great trade. And no, it, wait a second, there's only one iron plate here. Oh, I only asked for one. So they're going to pick up the remaining eight and leave with them. And in the meantime, meanwhile, uh, work on the mine continues. So we've got food going. Uh, the kitchen's going uh, great guns. When the metal works completes, I'll be able to build better stoves, which will allow my cooks to cook faster. Also, I've got a ravenous herd on the way in. Although, um, hmm, the colony has grown very quickly, and actually, I suspect what was previously, uh, like our super great food production from earlier, is only just barely able to feed, um, feed the number of calls I have. Now, I might consider, actually, I might have considered um, purchasing food from the traders, had they brought any. 
but in this case, I might consider uh, putting up another farm plot. Let's see what the diplomatic office has. Oh, there's having a nice conversation in here. So I've got seven influence with the bandits. I can point the bandits at another faction and that the bandits will appreciate the inside information. Or I can just forge paperwork with the bandits, uh, telling them how much I like them, which will probably improve my relations with them, but probably decrease my uh, relations with the Empire. I don't really like any of these options, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to keep on racking up bandit influence for now. Let's take a look at these uh, Stalmarkian traders. We've got the green felt hats, like the, the Tyrolean hats, I believe they're called, which are favored in, I think, like Aus real life Austria and Switzerland. Um, they've got suspenders, they've got stripy pants. Oh, it's Parmelia Flood. Someone else has a problem with being friends with the fish people. Oh, oh, oh. Haha. <laughs> Two immigrants have arrived, and that is a lot of beetles. Where are my soldiers? They are... They're doing push-ups. And what's going on here? What? So this fish person... Uh, see, that? If you saw the purple explosion, those are the fish person urchin grenades. And it looks like the departing merchants got in a bit of a fist fight with the fish people which is always amusing, I guess. Um, they'll have funny stories to tell their compatriots, except for this one, because he's dead. Is I better mark his body for burial. Oh, I've exceeded 30 colonists, so I have a commemorative bar of gold. And here's a crate of gold which has dropped down in the general area of my airship mass, which is specifically what is for and what is this? Fish people human butchery crisis. Fish person has butchered a human corpse. No, no, no. Uh, despite despite my intentions to maintain friendly relations, I cannot allow you to chop up and eat human meat. So my reactions can be to do nothing, to turn my relations with the fish people hostile, kill the specific first fish person hostile, beat the fish person and just intimidate him but not kill him or just say it's okay um hopefully it won't happen again eh what do i care probably won't happen again they're not hostile to me right they're not going to eat any of my colonists if any of you have read uh shadow over innsmouth then uh i i think that's how I think, you know, it was a mutual spirit of cooperation uh, that allowed their, you know, mutually beneficial situation to evolve. And if you haven't looked that up, then uh, you can look up that you can look up that story, The Shadow Over Innsmouth, author H.P. Lovecraft. And here we go. So back at the colony, I, well, I started construction on a barbershop because uh, several of my colonists are very badly hurt. Otherwise, life in the colony is going fine. I think we're still keeping up in terms of food. The corn field is, the maize field is providing most of our food, but there are still plentiful berries and fungus everywhere, like literally everywhere. So there shouldn't be any food problems, really. Uh, we've got plenty of wood and stone and clay. Just newly set up the hematite mine over here. I've actually assigned an overseer to it since we finished the module. I'd say the colony is well on its way to sustaining itself. Um, so I'm going to end this one here. I, I really want to take a look at Alpha 47A since it has some really interesting sounding new mechanics involved. Um, otherwise, I think we've seen a fairly typical playthrough. Um, once you remember, once you know what all the production chains are and uh, you, re you remember to queue things up in the carpentry and 
dependencies and what what has to build the other, what other things. Uh, this is what you can expect a, a playthrough to be like. Uh, I mean, again, I've neglected to build the really interesting building, so I'm sorry. The laboratory. Um, I, ha I haven't really used the foreign office at all. Oh, but the fish people are here to give me gifts. Fish people bearing trade goods have arrived. Thank you, my, sh my fishy friends. Bran Griff is there. Bran Griff and Roman Sander. You would impress them with their pectoral muscles. Let's see if this is the same bug, which, yeah, it doesn't consider fish person gifts my property until I have forbid and subsequently claimed them. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's where the game is at for now. Didn't encounter any game-breaking bugs. Uh, AI seems to be pretty solid now. Um, yeah, we didn't build a lab this time, but I will make sure I take a look at the lab building and the new upgrade trees. That's a completely new thing. Uh, the upgrade trees now? Oh. And I've got a new overseer. And to top it off, we're going to have a commemorative bandit bombing run. God save the queen. Send her victorious, happy and glow. Too bad I can't actually see the camp. But rest assured, bandits are running, are burning and running in fear. And uh, sure, let's let's take these suspicious goods. Oh, roster fancy. I wonder what we got. Anyway, so that's where I'm going to end this playthrough now. Thanks very much for watching this one. I hope it's been interesting for you. Um, the game is Clockwork Empires. It's currently in Alpha 47 in the stable branch. Alpha 47A was just released to the experimental branch. My name is Alfred. The developers of Clockwork Empires are Gaslamp Games. And the game itself is available for purchase. It is in early access, so it's not done. And... You know, there might be bugs and instabilities. But as I have, hopefully I've demonstrated, it's pretty solid. Uh, yeah, so it's available for purchase on the Humble Store, uh, through Steam, and I believe directly through the Gaslamp Games website. So thanks very much for tuning in for this one, and I will see you guys next time.